You mentioned that 99% of scientists agree that man-made global warming is a very, very serious problem. The number that is usually cited, speaking of hyperbole, is 97%. And this was the, movie, the line in the Al Gore movie. This is the line that people cite. That number is completely bogus. It is made up. Lock it away with the tooth fairy and Santa Claus. It is not true. And since you're, you since you're final, trying to, well, yeah, instead of going through all yeah, the specific of, literature, since you're looking, study, well, no, well, well, think, well none, like of us have our, none of us there, have a, a, a library I, with us to go and look and check I, I these just, studies. I, so I, let me ask you, instead of instead of rebutting that, I knew I should have asked Ruben Stutter to moderate to, this debate. I, 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 uh, <laughs> don't worry, I'm sure he rehearsed that line in the bathroom this morning. So before, since you're rebutting things that he that he was mentioning, yeah. Why don't, why don't we have you rebut the questions that he asked, which were specifically, why not do something about it? Because, because I, don't I don't want to destroy 5.8 million jobs and get rid of 90% of the right, American but, but here's the, but the question. Independent analyses of the $93 trillion Green New Deal have shown that even if you could somehow pay for it, and nobody has explained how you could pay for even a tenth of it, even if you could pay for it, it would destroy 5.8 million jobs on day one. It would outlaw immediately 90% of American energy. We shouldn't uh, assail people who disagree with the, these predictions as haters and as deniers. You, you, you realize you're quoting things from 1972. Right, this, right I'm you, quoting you, you climatologists know, you, you, from then. You realize that nobody cares anymore about 19. I was one in 1970. Your mom was probably 10 in 1972. Why are we talking about 1970? Because, it, it, because it shows do, that scientific uh, again, consensus like has said, changed do over time. Scientists, do scientists, are they always right? No, but there's not much that scientists agree as much as they do on this well, issue. Well, in 1970, even, they agreed that we way, were approaching a cold air. Even if they're wrong. What do Republicans believe can be done and I'll, should be done? I'll give you a great example, because you're asking me, why don't we do something? That's extraordinarily vague. I, have, I support doing something and not doing nothing. There, we all agree. The question is, what should we do? The question I'm is, I'm asking you, what should we do? And specifically, unless, you, unless you want to yeah. cede the ground to Democrats to be the ones who come up with ideas. Sure. I'll give you an example. Which it seems like I'll you're give you doing. An example. Then the, give me one. We were, told, we were told that if President Trump pulled us out of the Paris Climate Accord, the sky would fall and the earth would be doomed. President Trump pulled us out of the Paris Climate Accord. Everything was fine. We were then told by those same people who sold it. Well, it, it was actually better than fine. We were then told by the same people who sold it that the Paris Climate Accord would only get us one third of the way towards stopping catastrophic man-made global warming, meaning the Paris Climate Accord wouldn't have done anything in the first place. But there is actually good news, because we pulled out of the Paris Climate Accord, and guess what turned out in a 2018 study? That the United States leads the world in reducing carbon emissions. And you know what else is funny. You know what else is funny from that study? All those signatories to the Paris Climate Accords, Spain, Canada, the European Union, certainly China, not only did they not abide by the regulations of the Paris Climate Accord, they actually increased their climate emissions. So the U.S., we don't join the Kyoto Protocol. We pull out of the Paris Climate Accord. We don't pass a carbon tax. We don't pass gas taxes. We don't pass cap and trade. We are still leading the world. Not only are we doing something about protecting the environment, we're doing more than anybody else. Are people who are marching and shouting Jews will not replace us, are they good people? I, mean, I don't yes know. Or no. I mean, yes, a yes or no question. Uh, yes or no. No, it's a yes or no question. What a ridiculous are people, question. Give are me people, a break. You can boo me off. You know, the reason no, because they get, are you they get able two to liberals answer the question. on one conservative yes because or they know no. that it's a fair fight. Yes or no. Are, you, are people who are marching shouting Jews will not replace yeah, Nazis us, Nazis are, are bad, Clay. We agree. Nazis are bad, okay? You've chosen to answer it the way you want to answer it. We'll go back in the tape later and see if I answer it. You're rewording I you're think we'll be able to find it. that I did you're it. You're rewording this is exa it. But Clay, what you're doing right now is exactly what the mainstream media did to Trump oh. and Charlottesville. It's the exact so. same thing. I gave a perfectly clear answer, and then you tried to pretend that I didn't. I, did. Some of you might like the fact that this president is scrappy, and he gets down in the mud, but it's not sustainable as a society. It's leading to the society being at its, increasingly at each other's throats. And when he's got to push back from him. He's got to lead. He's got to be the one to bring people together, not push people apart, and that bothers me. Do you think he, you said he did condemn it. Do you think that his statements in Charlottesville, I mean, that was over a year ago, but do you think that his statements in Charlottesville were enough? Do you think that his, do you think that what Chris is saying about his um, 
responsibility to lead was displayed that day? I think, I mean, it is simply a matter of fact that he did explicitly condemn white supremacists and racists at Charlottesville, and he did it repeatedly, and he's done it repeatedly on the campaign trail. You, you might still object to his rhetoric, but he has repeatedly, for years and years, condemned racists. He even one time said, he said, how many times do I have to condemn David Duke? I hate David Duke. I don't like David Duke. So he's done that repeatedly. And yet, most people don't know that because of a mainstream media narrative that President Trump is a racist because, they, I mean, in that case, they explicitly lied about what he said. The, the, these words have meaning. You know, uh, one of my favorite examples of this is the CNN contributor Ariva King was on uh, the radio show with our friend David Webb. And she was l talking to David Webb and she accused him of exploiting racism and exploiting his white privilege, which was a big shock to David Webb because David Webb is a black man and she had just never seen him before. This, she didn't call him a white privileged guy because she thought it was true. She did it because it was politically convenient and if he had been a white guy, she could have gotten a lot of play with it. That's very dangerous. When the president tweets, it scares people. It moves markets. His words matter more than mine, more than yours, more than anybody else's on the planet. And he does not choose them carefully. And that is leading to problems in this country. It has led to problems in the markets as well from time to time, from what he said. And he needs to be more careful with that. I well, think you would agree think, with that. Uh, well, you know, I, I he, think you need to agree with that. He tells Last me, time I told you he, to agree with something, he, you should have just agreed with me. He, uh, <laughs> well, I'm not so sure about that. He, he, he told me that he uses the very best words, and I think he probably does. And I think, frankly, when the left tells you to say something, you can uh, show them the underside of your chin. You know, I, I, I think so much of the trouble in this country is the left tells us you have to say this, you have to believe that, you have to say Trump is a racist and an anti-Semite. Trump has a town named after him in Israel. If he's an anti-Semite, he's the worst anti-Semite in the history of the world. He's very ineffective at it. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button and share it with all of your friends.